You are listening to Arkitudora. So, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Arkitudora, where these two random dudes suddenly talk about architecture for some reason. I'm Matt. And I'm Jun. And yeah. Uh, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, how's life, June? Uh, as usual, to be honest, as usual. <laughs> Every week is the same. I don't think anything special will happen until the pandemics and and the world back to normal. Yeah. So, uh, but it's a busy but, week. But actually, yeah. Before as we start, I, actually, how's how's the vaccination in at least in Berlin? Oh, I have no news at all for at least for my side. First of all, uh, we are still belongs to the young age group. So ah, uh, so they are also doing the older age and higher risk first, uh. According to the news, supposedly it's like this, but I've at least they should have like sent us some letter or whatever. But until now, I haven't received any. So yeah, I'm just uh, waiting. Yeah. yeah, but what I did is like. The all those like uh fast test center, they are uh they're getting more and more around the cities. Uh. So whenever you go to uh any indoor places that requires the fast the rapid test uh certification, then you uh, for for example the the one one of the shopping mall uh, which is called the Mall of Berlin, so they have this like rapid test center just outside the. The so the shopping mall. So you just do the test, and then you. After you got is a negative, then you can enter the mall, uh, and right. positive, and then of course. Yeah. So, all... and then it's free, of charge for every <laughs> Berlin citizen. Ah. Yeah. Oh, for Berlin citizens only. Also. I mean, of uh, course, like there's for, even no for you, it's okay, lah. There is no theories right now. I mean, you won't have theories right now. I believe. Uh, yeah, hmm. I, I mean, mean yeah, maybe been, some business workers or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe I mean they will say because they say the test is covered by the insurance, so as long as you uh, have uh, Germany, so as long as you are Germany, yeah, okay, okay, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if uh this pandemic actually happened at the time that we were in school? You mean oh you mean our time in Dessau? Yeah, in Dessau. Yeah, that's the life the our junior they are facing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. most of them they become they they have transformed the class into like online classes. So that's so that's really, I don't know lah. I mean we have talked about this in the previous episode. Yeah, that's why I mean, in yeah. the end, it's a bit hard to run the school and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about oh. in Malaysia? I know it's the uh, Raman. It's the Ramadan month. <laughs> uh, Malaysia, I feel it's going to become even worse. Uh, uh, I'm not sure because I haven't I, I didn't go to those places and everything mm-hmm. but uh, there are news online so you can see the bazaars that's like really full of people yeah yeah full of people and the case number of cases are rising and in terms of vaccination also uh, so far no I news I, I mean, mean at, least, at least for us like younger guys we, are, mm. we definitely don't have any news because we are not even in the Supposed date yet, mm-hmm. but uh, even the people I know who have registered who are at least in the elderly, which are supposed to be their turn now, mm-hmm. uh, haven't had any news yet. Also, so I'm mm-hmm. not sure what's happening. Okay. Maybe things will get better. I have no idea at all. No uh, news. Do you have any? I mean, do you have any friends got vaccinated already? Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. But those are like frontliners, so oh. they've already been vaccinated. Other than that, I haven't heard of anyone other than the frontliners I know who have uh gotten this vaccination in Malaysia at least. Okay, so yeah. uh, really Same no idea. Me. Even for my parents, I mean they are like a uh, senior citizen, so uh, from what I know is because my 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 dad he got high pressure, so he need to do a lot of checkup first. Before he do vaccination Oh Yeah I have a friend His father actually Before this um, Official vaccine Vaccine came to Malaysia I, I don't know because he 
he sh- he's sharing the post about he got vaccinated. Like, kind of like the beta version, uh, the trial version. Uh, maybe he volunteered yeah, he, himself. Yeah, he, vo- yeah he volunteered. So, but, yeah, he looks good right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the only, only person that I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I have some friends, but not in Malaysia. Uh. I mean, in Singapore already got to vaccinate. Uh, and in US also, seems to be doing well. Uh. They've already gotten vaccination and whatnot also. Oh, hopefully. Uh, yeah, hopefully things get better. But I mean, at least in Malaysia, things seems to be getting a bit worse. I have no idea how it's going. Yeah, to be. because they are saying like I don't know how many this is, which wave anymore. <gasps> the third wave, the fourth wave. I don't know. Uh, there is tsunami lah. <laughs> tsunami, yeah. Uh so today. It's actually a quite a special episode in some way because uh I'm not actually going to be doing a lot of talking today <laughs> after this. <gasps> and we'll let uh Jun present his thesis in the Sao. Mm. I mean not really like present his thesis in the Sao, but I mean during our <laughs> schooling in <laughs> our schooling in the Sao at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh this is what led up pretty much like all of our education throughout the years were pretty much lead up to this thesis or unless we go for PhD which I think both of us don't have a, we don't really want to go at the moment for at me the I, moment. yeah I, I've come to conclude myself I won't do the PhD yeah that's, that's why I say I mean you never know like maybe 10 years <laughs> yeah. and you just already say like, oh I PhD like doing, yeah. that's why like at the moment we really we don't really have the thinking to go mm-hmm. and continue our PhD so this is basically the combination of all our education and mm. if you're listening in Spotify, I, uh, at least I hope this will go onto YouTube, <laughs> and you mm. can see actually see the slides that Yan Jun prepared for us. And mm-hmm. if you're on YouTube listening now, I guess you'll be l- looking at this slowing for quite some time. <gasps> um, I can explain so it later. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'll pass it to Jun, and I'll just shut up for a while, and let's all listen to Jun's presentation. Ooh-hoo. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you for the introduction, by the way. <laughs> okay, so as you can see from the title, is is the the biggest word is twenty eighty, is so far up away from our timeline right right now, and the reason of this is because I mean we all have the team of the thesis that we uh work on when we kind of like choose the lecturer we we want to uh, go with. So apparently my lecturer, he proposed this uh, kind of team. It's called Road of Dreams. And further on, we, we kind of like de- developed from this big subject. And I come up with this title, which is uh, Road of Dreams 2080 Tomorrow. And actually, uh, kind of the description is Ventures, the Hidden Myth of Silk Road by inspiring its architecture, future development. Uh, the reason that I have this is because other than the theme is about Road of Dreams and also the site that my lecturer proposed is um, in China. Uh, anywhere about, um, and yeah, anywhere in China. So, and somehow he is very, uh, yes, a few projects along the Silk Road and so he actually shared his experience with us, like, okay, um, his projects on along the Silk Road and in Xi'an or a lot. Of, I I, to be honest, because it's like three years ago already. So I, I I I'm sorry that I've, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, uh, the most important. Uh, I mean, some of the content about from my lecturers. So, okay, my site is in China. Okay, let me go to the okay. Uh, and the the snowing thing that Matt mentioned is actually, uh, it's not snow. Is uh, it's rock. It's rocky. It's not dropping from the sky. Okay. So next. Mm, wait. Is it next? Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, but actually, just now you say sorry. I I didn't really understand. Is uh the mm. rocks falling from the sky, or is it you are filming from the sky and the rocks are moving? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you actually remind me. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's the sky. It's the rocks that flying in the sky. 
Ah, so okay, 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 okay. understand. Alright, okay. Continue. Thanks for reminding me. I mean, even though it's my own project, uh, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Imagine yourself. I I mean, uh, that time when I was presenting, uh, this was two years ago, twenty nineteen, June twenty six, and three uh fifteen forty five was my presentation time. So imagine yourself going forward 60 years, 70 years later. And I bring you guys to the site of Lanzhou, which is in the mm, west part of China, near to... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a town that along the Silk Road. It's a very long story. I mean, there's a lot of story about Silk Road. So uh, I won't go, go, go on this presentation. We'll talk about that sometimes. Uh, maybe a brief mm -hmm. uh, explanation, like a very, very short explanation of what is the Silk Road, if um, you can. Oh, yeah, I should, yeah. Uh, so the Silk Road is actually a, a road that connects the West and the East region uh, back in like maybe 2,000 years ago, 3,000 uh, years ago. And then along the road, they actually transport um, crops, products from the East region to the west so as you can see why um well, nowadays we have some we can see if we if we study uh the history we can see some chinese uh, some east uh product appears in the west and the west products appears in the east so this silk road is actually a long 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 journey of this uh trading trading history so and then what why is it called silk road because at that time china is very f um well known with their silk production and they transform uh, and they transfer their product they uh promote their product and apparently the west love this kind of product and they kind of like bring a lot of silk uh, to the western country and that's why it's well known as a silk road yeah so i hope that you uh, understand i mean if you are very interested you can go um yeah i feel that's online. a really it's good a, explanation a, of what it is it's, it's really long topic uh, I, to be honest i can't yeah, really I mean, remember that what i've read uh, two, it's three okay years ago. i mean just yeah. a, like a very brief explanation to say mm -hmm. like what what it is because i guess a lot of people won't really yeah, know yeah. like what what it is uh, mm. If you want more detailed explanations, and then just uh, search by yourself. Yeah, yep, like exactly. yeah, exactly. So, okay, so back to the presentation. I try to, like, create a scenario. Okay, so ima imagine, like, okay, what I'm saying. Previously was, uh, we have reached Lanzhou, west, uh, west part of China, and the temperature right now is 8 degrees, so it's considered cold. And, uh, yeah, slightly cold, chilly, and suddenly an earthquake earthquake tends to happen like struck the island nation near Japan uh, on this day and so the eruption and somehow another part of the world volcanoes happen uh, as well and uh, in this Hawaiian big island and so you can see natural disaster that we can't even prevent happens like for example, even like right now, the pandemic is not something that we can control, but it tends to ha happen. And what happened when natural disaster happen? We need to like, we need to leave the place. For example, like previous two scenarios that I've mentioned, one is the earthquake and the second one is the uh, volcano eruption. So apparently we cannot live in that place anymore because it's danger. So... And this happens not only recently, I mean, the whole human, uh, mankind history happens a lot of time. We always read about history. Oh, I think the most famous one is the recent happened in the recent earthquake in Japan as well. And, the, and then it caused the, what is that thing? The radioactive thing. Ah, they, are, they have a nuclear plant there and then and this happened and then the nuclear plant failed and then a lot of explosion and the radioactive uh, 
uh, what's that word? Yeah, so basically it's saying that that area becomes unsafe and you can't live there anymore. Mm-hmm. So, when we try to move somewhere which is more safer to live, and a lot of scientists or, or, or astronauts, they kind of ex- they start to explore Mars. They're trying to find uh, evidence of habitable uh, species or planets. Uh, in 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 the universe, so the nearest one to us is Mars, and of course we have tried um, Moon, and then they they were saying that there's no any evidence of living habit uh habitants. So the the latest news on twenty twenty one that we know that oh they are they probably able to grow crops or plant on Mars. That's what I know. The 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 latest news. But for me, I still believe that Earth is the best place to live. I mean, we can't just uh, dump everything we we created on this Earth and then we escape to another place to live. I mean, that's human nature. I can't blame. But instead of escaping and then just create a lot of problems that we have created and then run to somewhere new, why don't we come up with a solution that uh, could save our Earth again? Yeah. So as I mentioned, this is a road. the The big theme of my thesis is road of dreams, and twenty eighty. So twenty eighty from uh, from uh, from now is around sixty years. So I believe sixty years. Uh, I mean, every time a, re- a revolution happen, some some human uh some human habits will change, and then living condition will also change. For example, if you turn back the nearest uh, revolution that happened is the industrial the industrial revolution, which has happened in uh nine uh, eighteen hundreds, and what happened next is we actually speed up our development because we have this technology of um, steel material and then all those building materials and then uh, machineries and then a lot of a lot of stuff and then come up to now and we actually developed from 200 years until now we I believe that maybe like 200 years before we couldn't imagine like we are leaving the world right now and suddenly we suddenly we have we, we right now we can travel with cars with aeroplane and even air rockets. So I believe in future, we human could come, always come up with a solution to have a better living condition. And what's a better uh, bet, uh, better living condition? So first of all, you you want to have a safe place, a safe um, space to live in. And the second one is the the disaster the disaster free. And something that we can't avoid, but we try to keep ourselves away from them. Or at least when this happens, we can still save our uh, lives. And second thing is the most, I think it's a very huge topic that we, we've talked for, talk for the whole uh, dec- decades, which is the, the climate change. So as we know, we, uh, the what's that thing? The United Nations, they have this called Sustainable developments and the climate change is one of the most important topic that actually emphasize and the recent climate summit they also have this uh, exchange between countries and countries like saying how to reduce the carbon and so and which is were related to the temperature which is causing the ice in North Pole and South Pole so uh, it's also a very big topic. But this actually, all this combination actually comes to the conclusion of my thesis. So I'm saying that in this road of dreams, I want to, I want peop- I want human to live in a, uh, a better living condition, a safe space, and basically it's like an improvement of human, of mankind as well. I mean, of course, we shouldn't just only focus on be human, but also all the all these living, uh, 
living creatures on our earth and of of course the earth itself and is uh too <laughs> so this is actually one of uh a graphic of a uh, of uh fruit yeah and and also a close up of a uh, what's the how should i say yeah the cell cell study so i think if first of all i'm not a i'm not a uh science student so i mean i i'm a science student but i don't study deep enough about this uh body cell fruit cells or animal cells but i from my understanding it's like every every is it every living thing they are made out of uh, a nucleus or a cell and then so they're actually from very very small um is uh, are these called are they called molecules or what uh, organisms I, yeah organisms or uh, something like this so so from the concept of this i came up with a living idea of if we live in this kind of self that we create and the self itself actually can can uh, reborn or recure itself so whenever we hit we got uh, the human dis- disaster that we occur for example like tsunami and then but we are living in this very safe space and we can avoid uh, human death or accident happen so this is kind of this is just a concept of it so i believe like i'm giving like a uh, very confidence to our technology at once that in future we might have something like this yeah so and as you can see this is look this is actually one of the rock that happens you see in the front page so inside the rock actually the small cells is built out of five by the small cells and as you uh, as i mentioned like cells uh they could be like big cells or small cells and from the view of an architecture i at that time i actually defined them as like uh the size of the cells actually made up of different function of the space and of course it's a very utopian uh utopian uh view lah, i would say because i when i say if i'm saying that we live in a rock that can float around the world uh and can avoid like tsunamis or the earthquake when this happens so but this is just uh the the dream the road of dreams that inspired me along the silk road so which is why i come up with this uh I to be honest, my even my lecturer say that this looks like a strawberry, and which is why the previous slide you see a strawberry, and with a cells inside. So, in this slide, it's actually uh what I mentioned a big rock and inside with spaces that looks like a cell, and then what actually hold this thing is the technology that I looking forward that we maybe we can build something that anti gravity. And make you float on the ground, and yeah. So this is really a a a very <laughs> wild dream, I would say. And yeah, that what I try to like imagine myself because the the timeline of this thesis we have is for a year, and the story behind I I try to like investigate. I couldn't. I I I would say I try to like improve my uh, thoughts on this storyline that I would imagine in future. It might happen in future. So like the rock that I mentioned just now, and this small cells, this small cells look like a uh, object, and we live inside. Yeah, and yeah, this is kind of like the 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 cells that I mentioned. You see, like these big spaces. And basically, I would, I mean, I believe you would imagine that it's a super huge object, and people basically just human living inside. Yeah, I I agree so, but I'm at that point of time. I this is 
my uh, process of work. But so I believe in future. I mean, of course, if I have a longer time to work on this thesis, I will go even further, deeper into this uh, space. This architecture uh, element could be improved, I believe. Yeah. And like imagine like even if the rock itself became an anti-gravity as a huge object. So of course the space itself at this point uh, all these spaces are made of made out of cube cubicles and then you see um they are they have different size of cubes. So and then people living inside and also in instead of live uh, from now what we always study is like uh, you're either living on x axis or y axis so i'm trying to create a new thing which is called not create i'm trying to like imagine on myself living other than these two axis we right now we uh add in a new element which is the z axis so instead of living right now we a space has multiple function other than just a one function so but it's as it separates by the axis that i mentioned uh, x y and z so maybe you at this point you sleep on the x axis and then you need to work uh when you need to go to uh, the bathroom or whatever and then you go to the y axis and then so on so on so on yep uh What happened? Yeah, okay. So a scenario that I create again. Suddenly um Incredible friend. Yes, incredible <laughs> friend. A superhero, you know. Yeah, and apparently a natural disaster hits again. And then I we need to like go away from this place and of course the captain who hold this whole big strawberry, they will give he will give instruction okay people let's stay back into your 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 space and then uh, we will move to somewhere else safer and you see because you as i mentioned the xyz dimension thing you won't have to like separate space with a wall anymore but you separate space with axis with dimension and you see have something what happened outside is yeah Meteor attacks uh hits the earth and we need to run. Yep, and this is also one of the one of the impression that I try to imagine myself in this space. Yeah, I feel free to give some comments there, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and next, yep, it's also the same. And some impression of yeah, for example, we 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 create dogs like a pot uh, around the world and then the strawberry thing could actually land of the land on this dog and then they fill the the stock or whatever or send people up to the strawberry yeah and yes and so this is the flying rocks that you see in the front page <laughs> yeah so i at that time I don't know, my lecturer, he, what he always mentioned about my project is, oh, the flying strawberry, the flying strawberry. Yeah, so the road of dreams in 2080 will be you were seeing a lot of strawberries flying, flying uh, along the road. Yeah, I mean, if you like strawberries, uh, they're sweet. And when you eat them, you make makes you feel happy. <laughs> so that comes to my conclusion of my thesis. Yeah, so road of dreams... It's either you make dream big or you make your dreams come true. Thank you. Yeah, that's my ending for my thesis. <laughs> yeah, at that point, I this is my way of uh, expressing my architecture view uh, rather than doing doing a lot of... I don't know, but maybe this is just what I did at that time. Mm. Actually, if you uh, if you remember, uh, and you guys, YouTube you viewers also, mm -hmm. I think it was in the first or second episode at the time that we have this image on the background at the time. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> yeah, see, actually, it's animated. <laughs> yeah, but I I have to like apologize. Uh. I really miss. Maybe I I probably miss out of a few points that I should mention. Uh, I mean, it, it has been a few years, years ago already. Mm, I think yeah. two three years. Yeah, two three years. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I got a few questions. Yeah. Um. Why why did you choose twenty eighty? Or is it just like an arbitrary mm. number? Or is that a reason? No, actually, because as the at the time uh, when we were working on this um, thesis is twenty nineteen, so we are actually twenty years uh, after the year twenty thousand, and before I want to like give it uh, instead of giving a three thousand year three thousand or two one zero zero, I kind of like giving a setback between. So if right now we have this kind of a uh, driving car technology at twenty twenty years because I don't know actually this is a Malaysia thing, I I, I believe if I say it like this this way the the twenty twenty Wawasan, yeah this is a Malaysia vision thing. Vision twenty twenty. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, vision twenty twenty. Uh, we were actually when we were young, we were actually told that in twen- year twenty twenty we will have flying cars. Yeah, uh, I mean so basically this, it was yeah. uh, the prime minister at the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I think it was during the Commonwealth Games, uh, when the Commonwealth yes. Games was uh, mm-hmm. hosted in Malaysia. I think in 1998. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, uh, our Prime Maybe Minister enough. at the time, uh, Mahate, he actually had this vision that Malaysia, how Malaysia would be in the year 2020. Mm. Of course, uh, yeah, and uh, right not really. I mean, uh, we were really young at the time, so we don't really know what's like the actual. What did he actually say for that vision? Mm. But from the view, I mean, from the images that I've seen, yeah, uh, it's like flying cars, basically. And then, yeah, um, with flying cars and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> and so this actually, so this is the sto- not to say story. I mean, one of that's why I've kind of like give it the offset rather than two one zero zero. But I offset myself for twenty years before tw- another hundred, another century comes again. So the, mm-hmm. this is the reason why I become 2080 rather than 2070 or 2060 or yeah. It's, a, it's just a personal story so it's not a lot of like studies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually one thing when you, not, uh, when you mentioned about the cells. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean this is not really a question or anything. It's just like a, maybe a discussion or something. Uh, uh, because I actually had this one thought last time when you know, I was curious about everything. Uh, uh, how how the cells work, like when mm. you zoom in further and further and further and further in, mm. it actually strikes a very, at least Tiny. to me, it looks very similar to when you actually zoom out to the space further and further and further and further. Oh, uh, okay. So it's uh, like a two point of view. When you zoom in, you see something like this. But you, when you zoom out, you also see something like this. Yeah, uh, and actually oh, to me, I actually had this, at least at the time, I actually had this thinking where, like, uh, what if the universe, because, I mean, we, we at the moment, our current technology can't really tell what is the universe, how's the universe function, where it comes from and everything. Although there are certain theories about, like, the Big Bang and everything and something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh... But, um, and my, my thinking was actually, what if it was actually a cycle? <laughs> you know, it's something like, you know, you go zoom out, you zoom out, you, until the end there, you actually reach back at a cellular level and then you start to zoom out until we are how we are right now. Oh, I know it's a bit this odd. Is, this is a super sci-fi thing already, I believe. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's just a thinking that uh, at the time, I, I just had it, suddenly had this thinking, like, you know, I thought, actually, I thought that you would be going into that direction when you were mentioning the cells. I wanted, I mean, what, that's why I was mentioning, uh, it's kind of like a biomimicry of, uh, of the most basic thing that we see. Yeah, I actually believe, we, why uh, not because, we, yeah, but your point of view is more on, uh, more on a, Sci-fi, I, yeah, sci-fi. <laughs> but maybe my point of view is more on like maybe we kind of like learn that the, the the what's that thing, 
the theory behind of our border, our cells that we, uh, that we know at uh, from uh, until now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and maybe we can learn something or we can adapt something of this kind of technology and then put it in our, our real life. Like, like I know there's a lot of superhero uh, superhero movie when you when you hurt that guy but he won't die because the cell just regen itself. So yeah, it's also this is one of the story behind it. Uh, of my thesis yeah but it's also mm. very interesting that the point of view that you come come up with oh, mm. and Luffy, <laughs> I've been getting more grounded at it I mean for me <laughs> now it's like actually when I was listening to the presentation I also throughout this cells kind of thing uh, mm. uh, I actually believe it's uh Actually, very similar to how cities grow. I mean, in real life at the moment. Oh, okay. Uh, I think there are some right researchers about this, called a uh, living city. Mm. Like living basically city? trying to say that, mm. yeah, basically they say that you know the city is actually a living thing, where mm. how it moves, how it grows, uh, is really similar to how we the are. Cell. You yeah. know how like the cells, yeah. You know, and then different parts of the city represents different type of cells, which has different type of functions, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually see that a lot in like how you, uh, present when you when you were presenting it, like, uh, like one of like the image you were talking about, the one with the section. Mm, it, yeah. I think it's a section of the spaces and whatnot. Yeah. It actually re- reminds me of. If you actually just lay out a plan mm-hmm. uh, of a city. Yeah, uh, of a city, yeah, I know. Uh, that so it's like, it's like a then, urban planning kind of thing. So this part is, you know, the industrial part. This part is the commercial part. Mm-hmm. You know, something like that. But it's, uh, ver- it's in vertical... Uh, Verti- in, in vertical... I would say it's more section. 3D. <laughs> because uh, what, you're, what you're drawing is in the end a 2D section now. But I can imagine it in more like a 3D because... In the end, when you when we do urban planning at the moment, it's always like two D plans. Yeah. In the end, that's what we have. But maybe yours is more like a three D, fun uh three D view Real. kind of thing. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's like it's not only growing, as you said, it's not only growing on the x axis, y axis, but it also can grow on the z axis. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's the one of the to- point that I mentioned at that time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, because uh, as I mentioned, because Silk Road, is a lot of stories behind of this Silk Road, and I yeah I should actually mention this when I study the West part, the West uh, history of mentioning Silk Road and the East uh, mentioning the Silk Road. They actually man they always saying something that they see a a a floating city. That's re- I mean if you if you really go in depth of this Silk Road story that you really the way of the mentioning, actually expressing a silk road, uh, a floating city. But I'm, the question is, if they mention this kind of thing, but why is it until now, 20, 21st century, we still can't see it with our advanced technology, our advanced uh, this satellite in the space. So that's why, I, not to say a conclusion, uh, I'm trying to stand in the point of view of during that time, maybe like, the fourteenth cent- the fourteenth century, the sixteenth century, the eighth centuries. Maybe they were thinking they want to go in, go to somewhere which is more, uh, more comfortable to live. So when they travel along the journey of this silk road, they always looking forward. <gasps> the it's like a paradise. Mm-hmm. That which is why also I mean, uh, when I talk so much, it's always in the, in the end it's a road of dreams, which is a dream that we. Of course, always looking forward to, and then we hope it happens. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. You should. I mean, I, I, I always believe. Yeah, I mean, I always believe that. Uh, you know, you in order to create something new or something, you need to dream of something that's more far fetched. Like you know, if you are thinking too mm-hmm. much about the reality and mm-hmm. how things work at the moment and in the past, it's very hard to create something new. Mm. Like it's yeah. very hard to innovate when you're just stuck in the current reality. 
yeah. because the future is endless kind of thing you know yeah, yeah. Uh, but before I go into more questions I just uh, just share a bit of thoughts of you know when I'm just listening to your uh, presentation not <laughs> not a critic or anything but mm-hmm. uh, feel free to I would love to hear <laughs> I mean uh, it's just like things that I can, could imagine happening if uh, when I was listening to a pre- presentation uh, basically mm-hmm. uh, one of the things is when you were presenting about the spaces of I, I guess it's the houses mm-hmm. where you know you have the things stuck to the bottom or the top bottom and top left, left and uh, right of the yeah. walls yeah but I was thinking when you say like uh, there's no more walls separating space uh, actually, I mean, in the end, walls are still important because people need privacy and everything. So I won't <laughs> mm-hmm. say uh, uh, that that's wrong or anything, you know. Okay. But I was just kind of imagining a space where the things don't really have to be locked down onto, you know, the walls of up, down, left, right kind of thing. What if the things are more like, you know, floating or intersecting or something like that? I don't know. Um. I mean, uh, because you, you, I mean, like, real life at the moment we are kind of like grounded into reality we have gravity and we can't really do mm. much about this gravity but if you're saying that we can have a technology that don't Anti- have gravity, gravity we can get rid of the gravity mm. like rather than just still Basically, sticking mm-hmm. to the floors or the ceilings or the wall mm. kind of thing why not have things that is literally floating yeah, I believe it's I mean, if this kind of technology exists, uh, architecture-wise, there will be a like a super huge uh, revolution. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you oh, like you it, it's it's exactly the same as the like you said the industrial revolution. Where at the time when they first have this technology, that everything suddenly become this mm, kind yeah. of style, you know, because of the revolution. Yeah. Uh, definitely, everything changed at the time and. Obviously, if there's suddenly a technology like that, everything will change as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's why that's how I was thinking, like, you know, rather than having it still stuck. I don't know, I, I, I re- but I'm not sure how to, like, express this into images. It just mm. suddenly came out as an idea when you're presenting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand, but... Uh, but just saying that because... Um, wow, I was, like... Uh, when I was designing I couldn't say I'm designing but rather than I'm saying I'm trying to study and then brainstorming myself and then listen to my lecturer's ideas I mean I share my story I share the story that I create a scenario that I create with my lecturers and then the feedback that he gave me is more likely um yeah, he said, yeah, Jun, you actually think really well and I wouldn't stop what you're doing because this is, there's no, no wrong, right uh, right or wrong in the future. We, we wouldn't know what happened. And so, uh, I mean, he encouraged me to go even further or go even, I don't know, sometimes if you do too well, people will say, wow, uh, what are you doing? You should stop there. But yeah, but he didn't. He just tried to push me even further. I really... Like that. I mean, I, you can't say that you can't do it right now. But I think that year of my thesis, I really do something very different from I would do or I uh, I can do right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's actually one of the things that I learned in the South. So, I mean, this is what one of, uh, my professor told me at the time. It's like, when you're in education... As in like studying and whatnot. Mm, explore. It's like, yeah, try to explore things that in the end you cannot do in real life. Mm. Because it's more of taking the idea and expanding on it till there's nothing left to expand. Because in real life, in reality, when you have an idea, there's limitations to it. <laughs> yeah. And in education, there is no limitation. So you can explore an idea limitlessly. Yeah. Kind of thing, that's, yeah. So that's the beauty of education. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and another thing. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming you watched Inception before. 
Yeah, of course I did. The Christopher Nolan movie. Yes. yes. Actually, another thing that I uh, pop up in my head was the you know, and this is actually one of my favorite scenes of all time, which, which was when the, the city you know when they were dreaming and the whole is city it? kind of, okay, turns slowly and then becomes like a. Like the ceiling, the oh, sky. Yeah. How to explain this? Like the sky is also the city. The, then your leg, your foot. You're standing on also is a city kind of thing. You remember that part? Mm-hmm. Wait. It's the first time mm. uh Alan Page went into the dream state kind of thing. Oh, the starting part because I have the most memorable scene is actually the scene that they remember the they they were sitting on the chair and then the chair slowly fall fall into the bathtub. Because that's a, mm-hmm. the I think it's the ending part already. Yeah. So that's the most I, I don't remember the 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 starting part maybe. Okay, but I understand what you what you're trying to say. Uh but I mean in terms of architecture, I mean because this is like one of the movies I watch mm-hmm. the most times kind of thing. I watched this <laughs> movie. Uh, there was <laughs> once once upon a time it was my Keep you watching. New Year tradition to watch my it God. every first of January. <laughs> is it is it three hours? Uh, it's a long movie uh, No I think it's like Two and a half hours Or something okay. like that But I really really Enjoy the movie Because of the ideas That it comes out And everything yeah, But it's really mind, mind uh, yeah. Basically That that is uh, There's one part Where It's something like Your design Kind of thing But Because I mean It's the same thing right? I mean it's in a dream So your road of dreams Kind of oh. thing You know Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah Thanks But for basically what, the <laughs> what it was Saying is like what if the city in the end is not just on, like you say, the x-axis, but it's also on the y. It also can be growing on the y-axis and then the z-axis also. You, I think you should go back and just rewatch that scene. I, I should, feel I like, should. yeah, because uh, I, I think one thing that uh that scene does very very well is how it blends like, because in the end the city, kind of like punctures through a lot of things like the roads will go through this like, and then mm, there's highways yeah. flying up and down you know there's a lot of crisscross everywhere kind of thing mm-hmm. and this that scene actually has places where you know suddenly there's a there's a car driving on the Z axis and then it goes through a tunnel but the tunnel is actually growing on the Y axis <sighs> uh, yeah so I, I, <laughs> So uh, yeah. yeah, basically, I really, re- that, I really like that scene. Kind of I actually feel it's kind of like something that you can, I mean, if you plan to uh, go further for my carry, uh, go further in the future, on. maybe you can look into this scene. I feel it's a very, very good example. Yeah, I should, I should rewatch it again. And another thing that came into my mind when I was uh, listening to your presentation, do you play Starcraft? Uh, I used to, like when we were, we were young. Which part yeah, of it? Um, oh, you mean the... Basically, the Terrans, which is the humans, uh, which they, are the most like us, they actually have buildings that can fly. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because, they, like what you say is like, you know, this is a dangerous part, so you can f- lift up your building and then just fly somewhere fly else. Fly away, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a lot. It just really reminds me of that. It's a lot of combination, like, if you... Yeah, because it's just... I don't know if you categorize my thesis as a utopian architecture. Could you say so? Uh, actually, oh. I was thinking this is also kind of like a half utopia, half dystopian oh. thing. Because, yeah. you know, normally when people kind of view utopian architecture, utopian design kind of thing, Mm, uh, yeah, basically, it's a very optimistic future where everything is okay. Technology solves everything, kind of thing. Mm. But what you're saying in the end is that uh, because a lot of the natural disaster yeah. disasters doesn't stop and it's actually getting worse, and it doesn't get any better at all. Uh, okay. So we can't really live uh, on the land so anymore. So the background is, is very dark, but yeah. But <laughs> what you're living in is still very bright. Yeah. So it's like I see. Half half and half, I would say. Yeah, happy to uh, Because I mean actually one of the things I really wrote down is that in the end what you're saying about all this natural disaster, actually I was actually expecting you to be like uh you know, this building will be kind of helping into reducing the natural disaster thing. 
but mm. your solution yeah. to natural disaster is that let's just we let it stop. happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't stop it. And let's just let it happen. As, as, as long as it doesn't do anything to us, it's fine kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, maybe like what we can stop is like the climate change. But earthquake, uh, tsunami, this kind of thing, we really can't stop, right? If you're saying reduce carbon... Uh, but I actually believe that, you know, all these natural disasters like the tsunami and earthquakes and everything, although... Mm-hmm. No matter how it is, it won't stop. It will always happen. But the reason why it's getting worse is because of the climate change. Oh. I mean, it's not really because of the climate change itself, but One of the whatever is causing mm. the climate change is also causing these natural disasters. No, it's like, uh, it's, they, they related lah, they're saying. Yeah, yes, yes. Mm, I, I believe true. so anyway. Mm. I like, I'm, I'm, once again, I'm not, as you said, I'm not a science student. I'm not an expert or so. But I believe so that the reason why there's so many natural disaster is not because of climate change, but basically the same cause of the climate change is also causing the natural disasters. Yeah, true. Okay, so finally coming to the question. <laughs> there's still more questions. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> uh, just uh, fine. I mean, before this is more of like just uh kind of my ideas of yeah, how yeah. Your, what your popped in my head at the time mm-hmm. um, but actually one of the things that I was really wondering is like how did this like relate to Road of Dreams I mean not really Road of Dreams mm-hmm. or Indian how does it relate back to the Silk City Silk Road sorry mm-hmm. Silk City oh I think okay actually I then just now that, that I have mentioned the the eastern part of uh history that that writes about uh, Silk Road and the the western part history of writing about Silk Road so wait, for example there's one a novel of this what's that thing I don't remember I oh what's that there's one very famous novel talking about uh, uh I shouldn't I should have researched it yeah so so they were saying that, that I mentioned just now because even though in different region part of the world which is so uh back in those those days uh, it's like thousand kilometers apart they they the story inside the written uh written notes that they have uh left to us to study is they're saying that they always see some floating city flying city along the road and then right now we as i mentioned just now 21st century but we still can't see it with our eyes we still can't find the flying city that they mentioned in the in the history see so that, this is why I find that it's very interesting two can, two regions so far apart different timeline but they were mentioning the same thing it's either they they really see the city but we still can't see it and or actually that what I mentioned also just now they wanted to see this. They wanted to see. They were. They were looking forward for this. They were looking for paradise, or maybe that time because, because we were lo- always looking for something good in the future. That's and, this is the reason that back to relate to my topic about road of dreams. So, it's either, uh, we haven't. Uh, we, it happens in future, but we. We can't see it right now, so we either go make it happen or we let let it uh lie on our dreams on our, on our road of dreams. <laughs> yeah, I think I should. Uh, that's that's how I explain my <laughs> my road of dreams yeah, topic. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's very <laughs> uh dreamy. Is it? Um, should I uh, <laughs> describe it like this? Yeah. I mean, it, it is the road of dreams kind of thing. I'm just, uh, just wondering how, like from, because as you said, like the starting of it is uh, uh, basically talking about the Silk Road and everything. Mm, yeah. And then suddenly you arrive at this place, like mm. floating strawberries, you know, just yeah. trying to relate what's the, mm-hmm. where's the relation? I, is that you want to know why Silk Road come up with flying strawberry? Yeah, yeah basically, something like that. Yeah, basically, yeah. basically that's the story. That That's the story uh, about to different region and different culture, different timeline, but they always see the same thing, but we couldn't find that thing. Why is it? 
what is the reason so yeah that's the conclusion for my thesis mm-hmm. uh, and actually another question I wanted to ask is uh, because I mean relating back to the previous episode you know design process and everything mm-hmm. uh, just wondering like and uh, basically we don't have much time as well Mm. <laughs> but it's okay we can talk uh, this about next episode as well yeah <laughs> let's go ahead uh, basically what uh, how did you start like mm-hmm. like you said just now that uh, your professor at the time he actually mm. gave you this uh, brief the brief mm. is actually the silk road no uh, yeah the no the brief is actually road of dreams but where is the site and then he specifically saying on Silk Road. I mean, the reason is because he uh, got so he got he got a few projects on along the Silk Road, which is I mentioned Xi'an and I mm-hmm. Urumuchi okay, okay, or something okay. like this. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, he wants you to kind of do something about your the road to your mm-hmm. dreams kind of thing, and yeah. the site is the whole Silk Road kind of thing. Mm, but in the end, the your s- road, your site is can. kind of like flying everywhere. Not really yeah. on the sick road, so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So a bit different from my colleagues, uh. So some of them actually pick a spot like um a de- a uh, a desert, and then yeah, as you can see, our one of our friends Alex, and then he make this thing called his thesis is about desertification. So how do you, uh, make, living in the de- in the in the, in the, in this kind of environment? Road. Yeah, in the desert, in uh-huh. this kind of environment. Yeah, but mine is a bit more like what you say, half dystopian, half utopian because mm-hmm. yeah, I just love to do it do that at that time <laughs> and I really appreciate my lecturers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh so just trying to understand kind of your thought process. Uh. So at the time when you were presented this kind of thing, mm-hmm. like what was it that you went into researching or like what what was it that you did at first at first? Mm. Yeah, I think the most basic is I research on a lot of this background of Silk Road, because, I mean, if if I if I wouldn't tell you that, uh, I mean, if I didn't study about this Silk Road, uh, you wouldn't know that actually, why is it the the East uh history, the East part culture and the West part culture they are so different, but actually something similar came along, and this is kind of like one of the uh, research that I came up with and uh, and I come up with this thesis. Yeah, so, I mean, of course, the uh, a lot of people, like maybe some people do thesis with, I mean, their research method are more on data, but uh, I mean, mine is also data, but mine is more on history part. And it's either the history are uh, wrote uh, I don't know because it's always uh, it's always how to say because it's also, it's so long uh, before uh, and how people record history there might be part by parts uh, it's either they are not not um, not accurate or some parts lost out and then so I need to like picture them picture them and then find the same not to say same similarity but what actually can cross along these two history because I actually what I what I've told you I need to like go through like the Chinese literature the Chinese history first and then I also go into the his uh, in English uh, boarding history so of course they they express their way history is different so I do them in I collect the data that I think suitable for my project and mm-hmm. I put them uh, I list them up and then I find a similarity of kind of try to connect them and then came up with a try to come up with a story la. so which is why you see that my presentation are more more on a scenario type rather than I'm explaining okay because this 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 so that 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 Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I hope you understand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and my final question, uh, because this our thesis actually goes through two semesters. Mm. Yeah. Uh, 
at the end of the first semester when we had to submit in the name and the summary I forgot what it's called basically mm. the uh, write up for what our thesis is about yeah 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 like what is the was it yeah I mean is it basically the same thing you had or uh, mm. was it any different I think the different part is uh, at that time I couldn't come up with uh, not to say a solution uh, I haven't came up I, what I did is only I study about the background the story about the Silk Road uh, of these two region, and then what can I uh, take out from the story to develop something uh, related to architecture so at the time I think I be, uh, what I mentioned is like the Flying City I only I only find out oh they were mentioning Flying City but are there anything that I can do work on it so which is why if the the short description of my title 2080 is like venture ventures the hidden myth of Silk Road so this kind of history is either a myth or just uh or really happening so and how this came out with an architectural story is what I developed in the second second semester. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. they, they, it, it's not totally different, but I think at the front at the first semester, at, as the first in the first semester, it's more on uh, uh, data collecting, uh, read up studies, and then, uh, and the second semester is only more on I try to pick up something which is more related to the architectural part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, my closing thoughts about this, uh, yeah. your thesis, <laughs> uh, basically, I actually feel your, your whole thesis, right? It mm-hmm. can be developed into like a very nice world. I mean, in like tw- in the future kind of thing for like, a very a very adventurous movie or game, you know, you know something oh. like uh, something like sci-fi. Can't think at the top of my head. I really can't really <laughs> think about many movies like that. But mm. uh, in terms of games, maybe something like you know Uncharted kind of thing, like mm. maybe a very adventurous or uh, Indiana Jones, you know those type of thing. <laughs> but maybe that? kind of futuristic kind of uh like very adventurous, mm. or you know you can also like. Actually, maybe something like Oblivion, something I don't know, but I I can actually imagine like a whole world based on your your design, and if it was further developed, maybe you can talk more about how the other parts of the like other than just your building. Mm. Or, I won't say it's a building other than your floating strawberry la. <laughs> It's like what is happening throughout the whole world. What is happening to Mm. The so it's like the big picture I could develop on rather than this small rock and I try to yeah like, I mean mm. I actually can feel that if let's say you were presenting in a way that you're actually telling a story rather than you know you're going through architecture uh, too much envision yourself looking at this strawberry kind of thing mm-hmm. like but if you're if you're presenting like yeah no, I this know is I'd start like the story line the then. world is you know uh, dying and, falling, you know the floor the everywhere else is uh, not livable kind of thing I, I don't know like, I actually can envision a whole movie based on this uh, basically yeah I, I'm glad that it uh, inspired you <laughs> some <laughs> some part <laughs> you never know this like suddenly got picked up and then you see like in Hollywood a floating strawberry movie kind of thing <laughs> the floating <laughs> strawberry <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny enough, because German, uh, I don't know if you remember, Germ- the Germans really like strawberry a lot, and then they sell strawberries yeah. during the summer, right? You remember these small stores? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, they were everywhere. Not only they strawberries, were, also they, cherries and yeah, cherries. And then, and then one time, uh, I was on the cycling trip, and then we cycling along the road. There's this big, huge, uh, flying balloon shaped like a strawberry. And then our friends, they just say, oh, Yanjun, this is your thesis. Something <laughs> like this. Yeah, if I can share the pictures, I can I can send you. And then you can see it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. 
Uh, so thanks for presenting. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank. <laughs> Actually, I I really feel that it's it's really very interesting. Um, next week is my turn, and I yes, looking. It's forward. a bit sad. Mine is not. Mine won't be so interesting because. Uh, I haven't. I've only seen your board, but I haven't. Same. I haven't seen your presentation. I think we we are on the same day that that time, so we actually can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, looking forward. Yeah. Uh, but mine is definitely not as interesting as yours because at that time I was more of like. Ah, uh, you see, you see. What? Why? Yeah. Why I came up with such. Uh, I really yeah, too, need to yeah, prepare more <laughs> slides to it because. Uh, yeah. There's a longer story to it, uh. <laughs> Okay, looking forward. I, 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 I don't like. I don't remember like uh how. Okay, like, I'll just wait for next week, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, all right. Uh, so for all the listeners, uh, thanks for listening. Yes, thank and you for listening. Yeah, once again, quite a long episode. <laughs> yeah, as usual, we always we just love talking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so right. thank you for listening. Hope you look forward here. to the next episode. And bye we'll bye. See you again. <laughs> bye bye. Good night. Good day. Good evening. Whatever you are. Bye. <laughs>